And we got a very, very, very special guest in the building today. Um, a legend, a legend, um, somebody that I've always looked up to, um, somebody that I've known for probably 10 plus years, um, just following his journey and just understanding um, the importance of his, his influence in our culture. Um, just go ahead and introduce yourself for us today. So uh, my name is David Whitehead, but uh, in the football world, uh, I'm more so known as Sneaker Dave. Talk about a sneaker Dave and how long how long have you been known as Sneaker Dave? Uh probably since I would say two thousand eight, two thousand nine, something like that. But I've probably been around in the industry probably about twenty years now. Ooh, talk about it. that's a that's a is that a dub? Yeah, it's about yeah, it's twenty years. Twenty uh, going dub. on twenty one now. Yeah. Yes. And it's just like again, it's um, amazing to see your journey, and it's amazing to uh, to be able to know you as a person, and because that's most important, right? Yes. We, yes. We actually know you as a person, but for those who, who don't know you as a person, what's top? What's five words to describe yourself? Man, five words. Humble. I'm always happy. Uh, obedient, thankful, and the last one I probably have to say, uh, just always curious, man, for the for the next thing. Absolutely. Now, describe your your journey into um, how you got into the sneaker world. So my journey is pretty unique. Uh, in the eighties. I had the privilege of being uh, my grandmother's favorite grandkid out of 20 grandkids. And uh, my parents used to send me from Cincinnati via Greyhound to Chicago to stay with my grandmother. And I believe I was the only grandchild who wanted to stay with my grandmother, right? So let me kind of paint a picture. So late 80s, you know, the crack epidemic is 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 kind of wrapping up. So Chicago's really bad. I'm pretty sure any any uh, black neighborhood in America was, was bad at that point. But particularly Chicago, uh, I heard was pretty bad. Uh, I did notice being there, even as a young child, I couldn't leave the porch. Uh, in Cincinnati, I could, but in Chicago, I couldn't, and I I never knew why. Uh, not a motor, I obviously know why. So the blessing in why I'm in the footwear now is because my grandmother uh, was a fan of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. So I was watching Bulls games with her, and at the same time, I was watching Michael Jordan go through the ranks in the 80s, going into the 90s, uh, where he became a global icon, and I was watching it uh, every step of the way every year I was going to Chicago. And while all that was going on, I was also paying attention to who was wearing what in the streets, even at that very young age. So I knew at a very young age, five, six, seven years old, that I was going to be involved in sneakers in some way, shape, or form. What was your first pair of sneakers? Uh, so I actually have, I don't have a picture I did, so I drew this, uh, I drew this, uh, I wrote a book in, I want to say first grade, and as crazy as it sounds, the book is called My New Shoes, and I drew a pair of white, purple, green and black Nike flights, um, and that was my first pair of Nikes that I can recall. Uh, as a very young man. Uh, I wish I had the book here. Uh, but that was uh, that was my first pair of Nike. They were a pair of flights. Talk about it. Talk about it. Um, what the history of flights from Pippins to Jordans, what do you think your favorite um, set of shoes or series of shoes? And then if it, even if it's the new shit, whether it's the LeBrons or Kyros or Katie's, 
What do you think your favorite series of of, of Nike brand shoes are? Uh, my favorite series probably, uh, you know, it shifts every couple of years, but mainly, you know, Penny. Penny was the guy uh, outside of Jordan, obviously coming up. Uh, Penny was the guy, man. Um, his line uh, really uh, talked to me a lot. Uh, even now, like even now, like the Penny line is great. But then there's LeBron, right? Like somebody who's you know my age uh, came up very similar backgrounds uh, as far as like upbringing in Ohio. You know to watch someone my age come from you know you know me watching him as a high school phenom to uh, you know a global basketball icon and he was running in my backyard. That's very like. Uh, it's a breathtaking experience to kind of watch his path from, you know, him playing basketball to, you know, him struggling to, you know, him being broke and flying to Reebok and Reebok offered him 20 million and he turned down 20 million to, because he knew he could get more like, his story is just, it's crazy. And then his line, his signature line uh, is something that I don't, think we've ever seen before and i explained this last year on a podcast where you know when the jordan line was introduced the concept series was a new thing with his shoe so every season michael jordan would have a new shoe right so michael jordan uh took that blueprint to to uh break down the wall for other players to have a new signature series every year lebron is actually the first guy We've seen who worn his game shoe every single season, and now we're we're in night season nineteen. So he's worn his new game shoe every season for nineteen seasons. And we never got to see that with Jordan because he actually retired twice. So this is something you've never seen before in the footwear industry. And now he's about to go into year twenty, and he's going to have a twentieth signature series. That's never happened on an NBA platform ever in the history of basketball. Never. So that just goes to show, like, his longevity and the, the, his greatness to not only just basketball, but just revolutionizing the footwear industry uh, all over again, in a sense. Because it's never been done. Never been done. Um, what's your favorite LeBron? Oh, man. My favorite LeBron is probably, has to be this whole generation. That shoe, man, when that shoe came out, it might it might not have been received like a you know like a Jordan one per se, but for an eighteen year old kid to get a signature shoe, uh, particularly again somebody who's from my backyard and was as young as me at the time, that was cool. Uh, so you know we go back to two thousand three. His game shoe comes to uh, Cincinnati, and for me, you know, working in a shoe store at that at that time. That was a big deal, you know. Nike had just signed him, ninety million dollar contract. We've never heard that for someone who had yet to touch an NBA floor. And let me actually kind of just set up the background for like how big this was. So like, you know, yes, he was his phenom, right? And he had, you know, he had the ability to take it to the next level. But what most people don't know is that. He was a pass first superstar. So LeBron is this pass first superstar uh, who can play all positions uh, at any time. He can score at will. And before he even touched an NBA court, he got that deal. And he does this commercial for the Zoom generation. And what people don't understand is that they don't do that for athletes like no more because now. They want you to earn it on the basketball court. Back then, LeBron was so good that they filmed this commercial before he even came to the league. And let me tell you who was in this commercial. Bernie Mac was the preacher. Don Stolle, Don, Don Stolle who was, uh, a re- I think she was retired at this point. She's basically a WNBA legend. Dr. J, Jerry West, and a plethora of other legends. Uh, Iceman, George Gervin was in a Nike commercial for an 18-year-old who had never played an NBA game. I just want the people to just 
think about that for a minute and tell me another commercial you've seen for a player like that. That stature who's never played an NBA game. That's never happened. It might have happened for Michael Jordan, but ever since LeBron, that's never happened. So just, you know, going back to the shoe, that's what made that shoe very special for a kid to be that good to where Nike got all these iconic basketball people to be in his Nike commercial. That was cool. Now, leading up to that and the, um, what do they call it, the Little LeBron? Yeah. What was the comparison like to that and Penny? So, LeBron, so LeBron's was, was very different than Little Penny, right? Because they kind of, I think the NBA was trying to do this cool thing with LeBron and Kobe um, with the pets probably later. But then I remember as the, as he had got better as a basketball player, they started doing these commercials where uh, they had like different versions of LeBron, right? They had the pretty boy LeBron with the fro and then they had the old LeBron and then they had all these characters and they were all hilarious because they were all their own individual character. And then it led on to the uh, to the Nike puppets with with LeBron and Kobe, and I think what Nike and the NBA always wanted was uh, Kobe coming out the West and LeBron coming out the East and having the finals, right? Um, but actually, a side note to that, I know we always we've always wanted a LeBron Kobe NBA finals, but I just want to throw out something real quick. Let's say, let's go back to the last dance. Let's say Michael Jordan doesn't retire. Let's say Phil stays. So Michael doesn't retire and Phil uh, doesn't retire and Michael Krause doesn't basically show him the door in the 1998 NBA season. We very well could have had a Michael Jordan versus Kobe Bryant NBA Finals in 1999. And that's the finals I've always wondered that no one ever brings up. And I know Kobe was a young pup, but if you think about it, Kobe and Shaq were coming through the ranks very fast. And if that that season, if you think about if you think about it, at the end of 98, going into 1999, there was a lockout. If the lockout doesn't happen, Michael Jordan doesn't retire, right? So, again, we easily could have seen Michael Jordan versus Kobe in the NBA Finals. And to me, that would have been the icon versus the future, you know, the and Kobe Bryant. So, just something to think about. Talk about it, talk about it. Now, let's rewind uh, a little bit. Where do you think you got the Sneaker Dave name from? And... Where do you think that, um, not necessarily celebrity status, but that well-known, you were well-known, where did that, that generate from and how did that get started? So that started in, I want to say 2008. So I come home from the military and Matt opens up a, so Matt Tom and Michael, the owner of corporate, he opens up a sneaker boutique and it was the first of its kind. Midwest in Cincinnati. And we were, you know, we were young kids at that time. So like this is all new to us, right? So we're 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 doing things as far as you know getting established as, as a store. And uh we were also doing things like on the internet. So the internet was still developing into what it is now, right? And we were doing at the time, uh uh G Rock, who runs the shoegame.com. He was doing segments called uh, "Show Me Your Sneaker Collection," and I was uh, I was asked to uh, be on the platform and do a collection video. And at the time, I remember Matt gave me the name, and I remember hearing the name, and I remember actually not liking it. Um, but then, like some odd way we ended up like keeping it and when we did the video and put it out there people actually liked the name so 
I don't want to say it stuck, but it, we just kept using it. And then it kind of came uh, the norm, right? And then it kind of came synonymous uh, with myself doing things and, and as far as like social media and doing footwear videos. And, uh, and I think that's where it kind of came. I don't want to say a household name, but that's what, that's where, where people adopted it. And, um, and I, th- I just think it just kind of personified like how, you know, me being relatable to people, uh, could be. Cause, you know, before the internet, you know, you, I didn't know there was other people who were into sneakers outside of people, a couple of people in Cincinnati. Then I, then I recognized, you know, nationwide and eventually worldwide that people were out there who were just like me and who had a common interest in like sneakers, right? So, uh, that, but that name is, is, is ultimately taking me places where I, I never thought I could be. And it's just, it's just all God's doing, man. So I'm just blessed that, that I like the name and it, and it kind of, stuck in it and people like it so shout out to matt <laughs> definitely shout out to matt for that um what what what's interesting is just seeing the progression of the shoe game industry right talk to me about when you first was a fanatic of the shoe game versus how the structure of the industry is now right so now you know well now we'll run it back so back then um being into the footwear industry, it was kind of like, you know, it, it's it's a it's a context sport, right? So, you know, everything back then, you kind of had to, you know, before working at a shoe store, you had to go, you know, you had to take a bus or mom and dad, you know, they'll take you to the mall, and then you go in the store, and then you see shoes, but then like there are those times where there's a shoe on the wall that you've never seen before, right? So now you have to make a decision. Do I want it? Do I not want it? And then back then, you know, depending on what your parents did, you you had a budget. Um, And then back then there were also options. So if you couldn't get the latest Jordan, which a lot of kids couldn't, I couldn't, you know, then there was, you know, there was the Fila sneaker. And, you know, if it wasn't Fila, then it was the British Knight, or there was that like here, or there was the Reebok. So there were options, right? Now, we we live in a time where, you know, social media, you know, information. Information is everywhere. So now you know, you know, what shoes coming out on what day, how many, how many they're going to be. Um, to where, even now to where if a shoe's coming out, you know, this weekend, now you have enough information to where you don't even want a shoe this weekend because you just seen a leak that's nine months out and you're going to wait in nine months to get a sneaker. So, you know, information again, and our, our, uh, our, our thought process are just kind of all over the place. Cause now, um, our attention spans are very, they're very short. They're very short. Cause now, now you're not focusing on the product that's here. Now you now people have it to where you're focused on product a year, a year and a half out, which is kind of backwards. It's exciting, but the product's not even here. And everyone's, you know, most people's focus are, are outside of what's now. So that's where we are in, in shoes. And you gotta take the good with the bad. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I just I'm just saying that this is where we are, you know. And you gotta you just gotta take the good with the bad. What was the last pair of shoes you bought? Man, the last pair of shoes I bought was actually uh, New Year's Day. Uh, Jordan One was uh, the pine green. White, black, and green. Yep, white, yeah. black, green. Oh, yeah. I love those. Um, out of your collection, right? Top five. Man. I don't even know if I could do a top five. There's so many. Um, I'd had to go. I'd had to go with the black and red airships. Those are dope. Um, Air Penny Two Black Royal. Uh, the Nike Air Breathe Hoop 
from 1997. Those are crazy. Uh, the Feel of Grand Hill 2 from 1996. That's four. Um, number five would have to be uh, the LA Year 99, the Wayne Gretzky signature shoe. And out of that collection, right, what's something that you have or something that you don't have that you wish you always had? Something that I don't have that I wish I always had. Uh, you know, there's a there's a ton of seat, there's a ton of shoes, but it, it's a lot a lot of times it's, it's shoes that people never heard of, so it's crazy. Uh, I can tell you a recent one: the Nike Air Super Zoom. Uh, that is a cross trainer endorsed by Barry Sanders in 1997. That shoe was very hard to find. And usually uh, when there are rare shoes uh, that are hard to find and you see it, a lot of times, uh, no matter the price, sometimes you have to get it right then because it's one of those shoes, if you don't get it right then, you'll never see it again. I just had one of those moments, particularly with the Nike Super Zoom, and now I'll never see it for another five, six, seven years. And I had an opportunity to purchase it, and now I regret it. I was about to ask you, what was, what's your, one of your aha? Oh, I got this off of steel, and you couldn't believe it. And what was that one shoe where you was like, eh, this could have, I could have waited. Uh, man. Uh, looking back at it now, uh, probably, and I tell this story a lot. Uh, the Jordan 9 Olive from 2002 for five dollars and I still have that pair uh, a shoe that I bought to where maybe I could have waited at the time at the time it was probably the air penny one from the soul collector crate uh, there were 25 made in the world but in my size in particular i think there were only two size tens in the world um i overpaid well i don't want to say i overpaid but i'll say i paid a lot for them um but looking back at it now probably wasn't probably wasn't a smart idea but it was cool to have you know one of the 25 pairs in the world um Go ahead, introduce yourself, and then I want you to uh, uh, shout out um, the, the, the next up and coming, uh, just uh, all around sneaker enthusiast that you like to follow. Somebody that you was like, oh, I, I love the way that he's doing now, especially up to date. Man, that's a, that's a, that's a hard one because I, I, I follow people, but they're, they're a lot older, so that, that's... That be that's the hard part with with this thing. Like it's it's uh, it's it's everywhere now. So that's that's the that's the thing with with this uh, social media thing. Um, but I will say this. So I'll I'll go ahead and introduce myself. So so I'm David Whitehead, uh, but most people know me in the footwear world as Sneaker Dave. And. My thing with the next up and coming people in the shoe world is because it's so many that I follow. Um, I would love to name all of them, but it's so hard because it's, it's so many people doing them. But my best advice to them out there is that, uh, you know, without saying names, without, uh, you know, missing someone, uh, I watch a lot of people's content, uh, good and bad. Uh, I'm just here to say, you know, I'm encouraged by your content, whether it's good or not so good. Um, Cause you know, we're all in this thing together, man. So uh, I've always, I've always been a, a, a somebody who, who likes to empower um, and, and not, not tear down. Um, so that's my whole thing with, with footwear content right now. Like whoever you are, everybody out there who's doing it, I encourage you to keep doing it, man, really. Because I, I just always think there's enough opportunity uh, for everyone to do something very special in this industry and in the world. Absolutely, we love to see it. 
if anybody wants to reach out to you, how can they get in contact with you? So you can get in contact with me, uh, Instagram, Sneaker Dave, Twitter, Sneaker Dave, or my email, the email always works, uh, Sneaker Dave, tell them at yahoo.com. And nice little, nice little uh, bonus with, with that, uh, the uh, email. So my dude, Will, came up with that, that uh, email for me because he was a big Soldier Boy fan. So he flipped the Soldier Boy Tell Him and gave and coined me Sneaker Dave Tell Him. So that's another name that that I, I randomly go by thanks to my guy Will. And then tell him what's to come in 2022 for Sneaker Dave. Man, what's to come in 2022 from me? Man, uh, so I'm looking to get back into footwear content. Um, I'm looking to actually get more into, uh, you know, more videos, uh, more things in Hollywood, more things with the, the NBA, the WNBA, uh, you know, commercials, if, 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 if God lets it, uh, modeling, doing more uh, uh, ambassador things, uh, more consulting for brands. I, I definitely want to consult for brands a lot more. Um, I think it's more more so my time to kind of speak up about, you know, things I'm thinking about and concepts I'm thinking about. So these are things I'm praying for that I, that I hope I can accomplish in 2022 and going forward. Let's go. That's a wrap.